We go upstairs to Mark Brown and Ray Lucas. And gentlemen, the two guys who are sort of the feature backs in this game both missed significant time last week, although they are expected to contribute here today. That's right, Rob. You know, Penn and Princeton are as close as Ivy rivals can be. Only 39 and a half miles separates these two rivals. They're also bound by that familiar theme that you're talking about, injuries that have helped derail their seasons thus far. Ray, for Princeton, though, one of the constants has been senior fullback Rob Teresco. And for a fullback, he's a great north-south runner. He averages uh, 238 yards on the season right there. As you see him, he's got a great burst, and he looks to be the hitter, not the hit tee. But here's what his specialty is, catching the catching the rock he's got very good hands he averaged 38 yards a game and, I, and i'll tell you what third and short he's going to come into play today well both coaches told us earlier this week that the key to the game is penn running back joe sandberg they say ray if he is healthy penn is going to be very difficult to stop princeton showing blitz here play action for walker throwing out to the near side he's got a man Lepisco gets one foot down that's all he needs out across midfield. Should be enough for a first down. Brian Walker, what a great pick. Second down and seven. Sandberg, another carry. Bounces it outside. Trying to turn the corner. Cart Kelly forces him out of bounds, but not before Sandberg picks up another Quaker's first down. And this is why I like Joe Sandberg so much, is that he doesn't look to bounce it outside. He just reads what's there. He's very patient, but then he becomes the hit turn, not the hit T. You're going to see him right there. Very patient. Watch it right there. Bounces out, and his lateral square. Kevin Kelleher couldn't get there, but watch him Ooh, lower the boom right there on Cart Kelly. I mean, this guy's six foot, you know, 210 pounds. I don't think any uh, DBs want to see him coming at full speed. So Sandberg continues to push his numbers today, getting another first down, and we'll call it the 38-yard line of the Tigers. Walker out of the shotgun. Keeps it himself. Great call. He read that play perfectly, and he's got another Quakers first down before Joe Serretta puts him to the turf. Ray, they've had some uh, good yardage on first downs in this drive and been able to mix it up nicely. Well, when Joe Sanderberg is running the rock like that, he, the play action passes there. Even the play action run to a quarterback is going to be there. Opens up the whole playbook. This time it's a pitch to Sandberg. Turns it upfield, and he's going to go in. Joe Sandberg got a great block. The hole opened up like the parting of the sea. And the first score of the game, it took over two quarters to get it, but Sandberg is in the end zone. You know, usually there's a saying that goes, Ray, it goes, if you have two quarterbacks, you got no quarterbacks. But Morgan State coach Donald Hill does not subscribe to that theory at all, Ray. In fact, he thinks it's working out just fine with two men, Byron Selby and Mario Melton. Byron Selby is definitely the more pocket passer out of the both of them. I mean, he's a big kid, 6'3", 205. He's the senior. And then you got Mario Melton, who is all of 6'2", 210 pounds. He's the my guy kind of guy that's going to run out of the pocket and make things happen. He's got a big arm, and both these kids are going to see a lot of time today. Well, there's absolutely no question who the number one quarterback is for Delaware State. For the Hornets, it's the focal point of their offense. But Sean Winton, and he can beat you in a lot of ways. Kicking off will be Jonathan Skeet with the wind at his back. Back deep to receive for Delaware State is Leron Moore and Brandon Hudson. And the kick is away, and Hudson fields it at his seven-yard line. Going to bring it back to the near side. Has the wedge forming. Got some blockers there, and he's following him. Still untouched out past the 40. Breaks out of one tackle, it's tiptoeing down the sideline, cuts it back inside, all the way down to the 15-yard line. An incredible return. Kareem Jones, the lone back, in the backfield behind Winton. Very long count here. They're coming to the near side, going for McBride. Perfect pass, touchdown, Delaware State. Start of the second quarter. College football on CN8, a MEAC matchup with a MEAC title implications as we get towards the end of this college football season. Deep into it right now, Morgan State taking over at their own 23-yard line. Mario Melton starting for the second consecutive series, and he will use play action. Plenty of time to throw. He's going to go deep, but against the wind, that ball was up for grabs, but it was caught by 
by Robert Surratt at the 45-yard line of Delaware State. How about that for going up and getting it? It is Devin James in the backfield along with Mario Melton. Well, Melton's already made two plays of more than the 20 he needs. He's got a 43-yard run and a 33-yard pass to Surratt just moments ago. Surratt going in motion. Time for Melton. He's going to go deep. Baptiste is wide open, and he's got it down to the 12-yard line, beating Andre Kennard. They had one-on-one, -on -one and they took advantage. We'll see if they go to the same play. They only need about a foot. Instead, it'll be a keeper for Mario Melton, and he is in for the touchdown. Morgan State takes the lead. They got what they needed, the first down. They keep the chains moving. And the clock moving as well with that one-point lead. A little gut check time there for both teams. And uh, Morgan State won that short yardage battle. Wolf coming in motion. Anderson off the right side. Has room inside the 35 and spun down at the 31-yard line by Jackie Watkins. Wolf coming in motion as well. This time Selby will throw all kinds of time and has a man sights wide open inside the five. Breaks the tackle and tiptoes out of bounds at the one yard line. Tight end release. They'll mark Let's it at the look. two. Straight drop back. Tight end just running the seven route. Coming right into the corner of the end zone and almost scores right there. Gets knocked out of bounds at the last second. By Ryan Robinson. Oh, they had the, the run package in. They slipped the tight end out. And now they've got a first and goal at the two-yard line. A 28-yard reception by Ronnie Sykes from Byron Selby. First and goal from the two. The give is to Anderson. Diving forward. And he fumbles the football. Delaware State has it. And a wall of blockers coming the other way. It's a team green with an escort. Selby's the last man to beat. Tiptoeing through. Touchdown, Delaware State. An incredible turn of events. Over 100 yards on the fumble return for Akeem Green. And the Huskies will receive with Alan Barnes back deep along with Brandon Young. Matt Wisnowski gets the kick away. It will be Young from his six-yard line. Heading straight up the field. And out past the 35-yard line. Great return for the Huskies. They will be first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Patrick G making the stop on the play. We look at Dan Orlovsky. We talked about his development. Nowhere is it more evident than those numbers. Yeah, he is just turned it around we talked about his maturation he's doing the little things right putting his team in the right play at the right time a 38 yard return for brandon young sets the huskies up in outstanding field position and dan orlovsky leading a potent husky attack high formation behind orlovsky And it'll be play action. Good protection, plenty of time. Oh, man, wide open down the middle. It's O'Neal Wilson. Touchdown, UConn, on the very first play of the game. Orlovsky with something to say to fullback Deion Anderson. And will work out of the shotgun. Quick drop and complete on the slant pattern. Out to midfield is Brandon Young who was stopped by Riley Swanson. That could have been a much bigger game. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, if Riley Swanson doesn't make that tackle, it's six points. Wake Forest was in an all-out blitz. The free safety was up, came on the blitz, and that time Riley Swanson saves a touchdown because there was no one behind there in the secondary because they went with an all-out blitz. A look at the numbers for Brandon Young. 21 catches, an average of 15 yards per catch. He's caught three touchdown passes.